So step one, in my opinion, is uh, really just learning about the world and learning about where you fit into the world, okay? And that's really important. That's really important. You know, it's hard to figure that out for a while sometimes. And sometimes it just, uh, you know, you find where you, where you want to go early. You find where you want to go early. And uh, for me, my journey was a little bit different. Uh, um, I, I've always been mechanically minded. I've always been good with my hands. I've always liked to fix shit. So um, I started off uh, doing, uh, I worked at Tires Plus. I was just a tire tech, right? Like that was my first real job. Um, I, I bought some tools. I got a toolbox. I was really good at it. I was there for a couple years. And uh, then they decided that uh, they were going to start working us 12 hour days. And then when we hit our 40 hours, we'd have the rest of the, the week off. And that might sound great, but when you're expecting to at least work your regular shift that you're scheduled for, after putting in a couple of 12 hour days, uh, you know, you want to make some overtime and they don't want it. They don't want you to do it. So I quit because I was like, that's bullshit, man. I, I worked really hard and now you guys are just sending me home and that's not legitimate for me. I, I want overtime. So I went from there. I started working at Toyota. Um, I had some experience, you know, it's tire tech. So then I was an oil lube mechanic. Uh, basically didn't really do too much of the heavy mechanical stuff, just, uh, a couple batteries and some, uh, alignments, uh, oil changes, you know, that kind of thing. Tires, um, cosmetic stuff, just customer issues, uh, whatever they, whatever they asked me to do really. But, uh, you know, they had long-term mechanics that were in the back that pretty much did all the, the main engine stuff or anything that was really serious, which was fine. I don't really care. I, I was I was doing all right there. But what happened there was uh, I didn't I didn't get along with the the, uh, the pit boss, if you will, the uh, the shop supervisor. He had a he had a pretty big problem with me because they what happens at professional dealerships, or at least when I was there, they pay you by the job, right? Not by the hour. And there's no minimums. There's no shit going on where, you know, uh, you get money if there's no work, right? So it's literally like an oil change is worth 0.3 of one hour or, or one hour or whatever, you know, uh, an alignment is worth an hour 0.2. So you, you do all these things and, uh, you get paid by the job. So that's great when it's really busy, right? Because, uh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, you can actually make more hours than you actually work if you work really fast and really hard and you, you know, get it all done, which is, you know, I understand that's the mechanic behind that, that system is to make you work faster, which it works, you know, some mechanics love it, you know, but the problem I had was, uh, when it was slow, when there was no, when there, when you got four or five techs fighting over one ticket, uh, because there's no other work, uh, <clears throat> that becomes a problem. Okay. So that happened for a few weeks in a row where things were just not happening. Things were slow. So I started coming in later because I was like, look, I fucking sit here for an hour sometimes and I don't even, nothing is going on. So I'm not going to work eight hours and get paid for six or even five sometimes. So I talked to the, to, uh, to the pit master about that. <laughs> he didn't like that at all. And I said, well, you know what? I said, uh, it really doesn't make a difference. I'm a fucking mechanic, right? What happens if I'm here, if, if I'm scheduled for one o'clock and I come in at one thirty? I mean, is there really going to be a big, big shit problem with that? I mean, uh, it's not like anyone's really depending on me at one o'clock. It's, it's, you know, I, I'm here, I work as much as I can, I as many tickets as possible. And I, you know, I leave when it's time to leave. And that's all, that's all that should matter to you. Right. So he didn't like that. Uh, you know, so I, I, I kept coming in late. I did because I was dealing with stuff at my house. This is why I, I had to come in late because I was, uh, dealing with some of my brother's stuff at the time every day. So he brought me into uh, the GM's office, you know. Oh, this guy, he's not gonna, this guy's not working out because he just can't get here on time when really it didn't matter. But anyways, uh, 
I just told the guy, I was like, uh, okay, well, I guess it didn't work out. And I said, you know, you guys need to treat your people better because this is, this is bullshit. Um, there isn't enough work to go around. And, you know, it's like people struggle in here. And, and so maybe they were getting rid of me so that maybe the struggle was not so difficult. Um, but it doesn't matter. I was there for almost a year. Um, I actually really enjoyed it for the most part, except for when it was slow. So I was living in Clearwater at the time and uh, Clearwater, Florida. And it was nice. I loved over there. I was actually in Dunedin, which is a little north of that. But um, I moved back to Orlando uh, after that. I was, I was living over there with my brother. This was the original plan, right? We, we moved out. I, was, I just turned 18. I was 19 years old at a Toyota, maybe 20. And uh, we were planning to uh, make music and take over the world. Like, that was our goal. You know, we, we had a lot of experiences, a, a lot of plans, a lot of things going on in our minds that we wanted to make happen back then. So he moved out. He moved out to Clearwater. <clears throat> found a nice little nice little place that he was he was working at and then renting a house and he told me Kyle it's time to come over uh, because uh, I got a great job and all you got to do is work uh, at the house and make music all day and then we can start our our grand design if you will so I moved out there and uh, <laughs> about two months after I moved there he lost his job <laughs> so uh, that's when I that's when I started working at Toyota uh, I mean, I had Tires Plus and then into Toyota. So, yeah, I was over there for a good amount of time. And then we moved back here a few years later. And uh, I got a job as a building engineer, right? Not a not an engineer as a designer, but like a, like a building maintenance guy, right? Because I was like, okay, I know how to do my, pretty much everything on the car. And I have a bunch of tools. And I've already done carpentry. I had spent a summer with my friend Sterling Zimmerman building a pharmacy in a Sam's Club. And that was really fun. That was really a fun time. Paid in cash. Uh, the boss was never there. And as long as we got our jobs done on time, he didn't give a crap what was going on. And it was, it was night shift. So uh, we would, what we would do is uh, we would sleep in the day. Um, we'd go to work at night. And then in the morning, we would party, right? Like first thing in the morning, like we would party with, with breakfast. It was hilarious. Like it was the most crazy schedule ever, but, uh, I had a lot of fun. So, uh, after that was over, um, yeah, I had some skills. So I, I applied as a building engineer and I went in there, I, I got a job, uh, in Maitland and I was working as a building engineer for about four years, four years I spent there. Um, in Maitland at the forum, the building called the forum. And it was, it was rough. It was a rough job. Um, I learned a lot though, plumbing, carpentry, basic electrical skills, uh, um, a little bit of HVAC. And, uh, you know, of course I used all my mechanical know-how to fix things. And, uh, it was, it was cool. It was, uh, you know, the boss was really tough on me sometimes, but, um, whatever I learned everything and it was great uh, it was a good experience I gave him like a two-month notice when I was leaving and I actually left there to join the Union Hall um, the the United Association with local 803 to study HVAC which is uh, you know air conditioning so <clears throat> I figured out that when I was there I was like wow okay I pretty much know how to do everything now except troubleshoot and fix air conditioners right because they seem to be like way more intricate and there's way more skills and knowledge involved and I guess I want to know more about how they work so um, the guy I used to call for service his name was Bob Altz and he is uh, he was part of 803 he was a service tech for MSI and he told me that he would help me out he would get me in the union he would write me a letter of recommendation he would tell me uh, how to do things, you know, and he would basically help me out along the way. So I was like, okay, cool. So now I'm 24, 25, right? And um, I joined the union and I, I it's a five 
year apprenticeship, right? Five years, you go to school two nights a week, you have your summers off, and you work all day, every day, you know, 40 hours a week throughout your whole apprenticeship. So the employer actually pays for your schooling, and you get to study everything about air conditioning. I mean, everything, not just about elect, uh, elect AC, but like um, electrical, like uh, design, like airflow, um, enthalpy diagrams, uh, you know, how things are manufactured, like it, the union training program is actually second to none, I would say. I mean, it's, it's in depth. I mean, they teach you basically like from when we were cavemen and made fire all the way up until the latest, um, ultimate machines that are out there right now, um, that are cool server rooms and, you know, humidify stuff. And it's just, uh, Whew. It was a long fucking commitment. Five years, schooling two nights a week, and I lived about an hour away from the school. Um, so, I got into HVAC, and uh, that's still what I'm doing today. I, I work in Central Florida, and I make about, uh, you know, upper 20s an hour. So, that's great. I mean, I, I love it uh, because... Not only am I a service tech, so I get to travel around the, in the day and you get to meet new people and uh, I get to see different problems and shit. I also get to use my mind because troubleshooting commercially, I work commercially, um, you run into some really weird shit. Not all the time, but sometimes you do and you really got to like use that information that you were trained with and you got to be creative sometimes. You really do because things don't always act the way that they should even when they're broken they don't act like they are broken but they they don't work right so <clears throat> there's a lot of microprocessors controllers switches sensors you know different things that uh, they just get out of whack and they just don't work like uh, like you would think they would <clears throat> and then <clears throat> even when they break <clears throat> it's not like it's obvious that they're broken because sometimes they're only like broken sometimes or sometimes it's a value that's just like not exactly what the computer's looking for or you know things like this so it's fun I got my tool bag you know I travel around I just fix air conditioners you know and then there's the whole refrigeration side of it which uh, you know ice machines refrigerators freezers walk-in coolers all this kind of stuff which is great to know great to know all that stuff because that I can take with me anywhere in the world pretty much um, cause I mean, we're always going to need refrigeration. And then when it comes to the, uh, the high temperature cooling, which is like uh, comfort cooling, uh, you know, you have all the residential everywhere, at least in Florida, you know, Texas, all these warm areas. And then you have the server rooms, which <laughs> you let me know when you think we're going to get rid of server rooms because it's just not going to happen. So as the tech industry grows, so does the HVAC industry, right? <laughs> Uh, there's just no, there's no way around it. I mean, unless you build your, your fucking server racks in Antarctica, uh, which I know they, they have, I have heard about this just to save on energy, right? Um, you're going to need, you're going to need air conditioning for your, for your computers. So I think it's a good trade. Um, I really enjoy it. I actually also do building automation controls, which, uh, Basically, I program uh, buildings to do things at certain times or when certain things occur to trigger other events. Um, and it gets really, it gets really deep. Like you think, you know, okay, yeah, so what? You set some schedules and whatever, but uh, no, there's actually programming. Uh, there's graphical interfaces. You know, there's alerts and alarms. There's uh, automated dialing systems. Um, all computer stuff. <clears throat> so I do get into a little bit of. Uh, uh, computer design and, and software programming um, not not a whole ton but <clears throat> a little bit so that kind of keeps that part of my mind uh, uh, engaged because <clears throat> I do know that technology is part of our everyday lives and I want to know more I, I love to know how things work like that's my that's my main game I think in life is figuring out how things work so <clears throat> yeah
that's what I'm doing today. All right. <clears throat> I got married in 2010 to a woman I was with for about seven years. Before that, it took me a while to get married. Um, so I wanted to be sure that I knew what the hell I was doing. And I thought I did know. I thought I did know. And I still feel like I kind of... I, I don't know what the fuck happened. Because now, uh, she, my wife went through some things. She had cervical cancer. And uh, she had a, a, a surgery and some chemo and radiation treatments for months. And now she's all healed. She's all healed up, you know? I mean, this, we literally got the news in May a couple months ago that she's okay now. Everything's in remission. And now she's leaving. She wants to leave. So she uh, she had a, a near-death experience in her life, you know, mentally. She experienced something heavy, really heavy. And she decided that she wants to be alone for right now. And I don't know what that means. I've, I've talked to her for hours on end. I've tried every... I've tried uh, looking at the issue from 